Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Hayden and today I have for you my review of the Chisona keyboard for iPad 8th generation. Now, this keyboard has been awesome. And before we even get into anything, I just wanna say a big thank you to Chisona for sending this out to me because this thing has been awesome and I love it. Now I have it right in front of me with my notes about everything I love and do not love about this. So let's get into First it. Of all, Apple does have their own version of a iPad case called the Smart Keyboard that does have a trackpad and a keyboard on it, but it costs over $100. I think this thing is very comparable to it, especially if you want a budget and want one for a lower price. Now, what I do love about this is this keyboard has seven different backlit colors that you can choose from to light up your keyboard. Now, the, the Apple version does not have that. Now, there are no patterns that you can choose from. It's just seven different solid colors. I love this, and we will get into a small test with this keyboard later on in the video. Now, this thing feels exactly like a keyboard would. Now, I don't, personally, I don't like the feeling of my MacBook Pro keyboard from 2018. The keys are very, very thin, and I'm just not a huge fan of that. These are much better, and these are on an iPad keyboard, which is crazy. Now there are multiple keyboard shortcuts on this. This thing feels exactly like a MacBook. It literally has the feet of a MacBook on the bottom. If this thing were to be your portable on the go iPad for business or personal use. Now this thing does have the home button, play, pause, brightness up, brightness down, volume up, volume down, a ton of different keyboard shortcuts on here, but we will get into the test later on in the video anyways. Now, what I'm very, very happy to see is this thing charges via USB-C. People are trying to go from micro USB to USB-C, and I'm very happy to see that because micro USB is slower than USB-C. USB-C is definitely the future for charging for iPhones, for keyboards, for almost everything nowadays. Now, removing and inserting the iPad is very easy. There's two clips on top that you just release, and you can pull your iPad right out. If you want to do put your iPad right back in, you put it down into the corners down here and then just push it in through the top. No scratches or anything that I have seen and it works very, very well. Now, another feature that is huge for me with this is the monitor view turns 360 degrees. If you wanted to use this just as an iPad without the keyboard, you can do that. Basically like a two-in-one Windows laptop. And if I wanted to go back to using this as a keyboard, I can just flip this up, turn it, and here we are. Keyboard and iPad are back in view and ready for use. Now, another cool feature is there is an Apple Pencil holder right here on the bottom. You can probably barely see it. It is a little blue ribbon that just holds your Apple Pencil. Now, I have an Apple Pencil first generation, but I am really not much of a drawer or an artist, so I don't really use it. But it is definitely cool to have if it's going to stay there. Now, I would say that this keyboard is the best budget keyboard you can get out there. Um, I have not tried other models, but this model does start at $60. Apple's smart keyboard with trackpad also starts at over $100, but this thing has far more features than the Apple version does. Now, this does have a small trackpad on it. There's a little circle as your cursor on screen, and I love that. It is perfect size. You got your lights. You have the USB-C port on the side, your on-off button, all your cutouts for your iPad, my speakers, my charger, volume up, down, camera, if I were to bring this on the go with me. All right, guys, those are all my favorite features and what I like about this iPad keyboard, but now let's get into some things that I'm a little hesitant on if I were to actually purchase this myself. Now, you can't tell the battery of the keyboard unless you plug it in. I would like to see something maybe on the top by the date or the time or even by my battery of the battery life of the keyboard. You can't see it until you plug it in, but that's not really a huge thing if you just want to plug it in and use it. Something else that bugs me a little, it might just be me, but when I am typing, my wrist just barely hits the trackpad and it will make the cursor go somewhere else and type where I don't want it to type. That might just be me, but I'm not used to using laptops all the time, so it could just be me. But if I'm typing, the cursor will go somewhere else, and I 
don't want to type there so it messes everything up. Um, something else that you cannot change is if you want to use the backlit keyboard light you have to be constantly typing on it or else it will turn off within about 10 seconds. Now I'm not a huge fan of that. I would like for the keyboard light to stay on especially at night so I can see where I'm typing and if I'm hitting the correct letters or not. But maybe there will be a second version of this iPad where all of this will be fixed but I'm not sure. Um, one other thing is when I close this, this thing is pretty heavy. This thing is probably like packing four to five pounds at least. This thing is extremely heavy and it might not be something for you if you are traveling with it on the go. It might be a little too heavy for you. But otherwise, let's test out some features that this iPad keyboard has. All right, guys, here is my iPad keyboard. There's a few things we have. We have all of our play, pause, delete, lock the rotation, not rotation, lock the screen if I want to. There's the home button, brightness down, brightness up. I could search, keyboard, pause, volume up, volume down, delete key, and the lock screen key. This is the keyboard lights. Now I forgot to mention earlier that you do have different brightnesses for each of the lights on your keyboard. If you want the light to be red and you want it to be at full brightness, you can definitely do that. If you want it to be green, you want it to be on the lowest brightness, you definitely can do that. Now there are so many shortcuts in this keyboard that I literally had to look at the user guide so I can figure out what I needed to do. This user guide comes with it. It definitely helps you a lot. Now if I wanted to change, if I wanted to change the lighting on the keyboard, I could go red, green, blue, holding the color key and the up arrow. Purple, blue, white, red, green, blue, yellow, pink, whatever you so choose. Um, there is definitely one of my favorites, the home button. Say I am in my notes, I just hit the home button. I'm back to home. The trackpad you can also use to switch over to your pages, but I don't really use that very much, so I would just use the arrow keys. Yeah, if I want a more smoother experience, I would use the FN key and the arrow keys to go from page to page. That way I can just click on The Verge if I want to look at The Verge. If I don't feel like going, using The Verge, I can just go back home with the home button. Now something else very interesting is, for me, I like to close my apps after I get out of them every time. So what would I do? I just double tap the home button and I can close each of my apps as if they were never open and go back right to the home screen. Now your keys on top, brightness down, brightness up, play, pause, which is obviously for videos, skip ahead, skip behind, is also right on top, volume up, volume down, no volume at all. Now this thing, if I wanted to use this as just a iPad, I would have to turn it on, rotate it, and just push it down. That way I can just use it as a tablet if I wanted to with my Apple Pencil. But if I just wanted to bring it right back to a keyboard, I'd have to flip it upside down, push the lid up, and then turn it 360 degrees so I'm back to keyboard view. That is one of the coolest things I think about this keyboard. Now this is totally usable for me. Sometimes I feel like typing, sometimes I just feel like using it as a normal iPad. Let's do a quick typing test. Hayden is using, see there it goes again. There's something that I didn't like. I was typing right down here and then the trackpad went up to here by keyboard shortcuts. I don't want to type there. That's just something that bothers me using his iPad keyboard. See, you can see it at the bottom. It types it out very nicely. You do have your shortcuts bar right here or if you even wanted to do speech to text, but yeah, that is some of the features about this iPad keyboard that I really do enjoy. All right guys, those are my thoughts on this keyboard for the new iPad. Again, a huge thank you to Chisona for sending this out to me. I loved it and this thing has been great. Now I will link this down below. If you wanna buy it for yourself, I highly recommend it. Otherwise, if you guys wanna follow me on all of my outside life, all my social media is linked down below and I will see you in the next video.